Ryan with Miss Dog Geek here, and this is going to be part 1.1, I suppose, of the uh, sideband uh, crystal filter here, moving it to 110592 megahertz. And a couple of notes. Uh, first off, you can see I got a bunch of values written down on my sheet here, and those are all basically rubbish. Uh, they don't mean anything, and the reason they don't mean anything is because yesterday. Uh, in the, or I'll just say in the previous video, because it might be yesterday the time you watched it. Previous video, I showed how I took these two little jumpers, and I plugged them in on my little breadboard, and then I moved the crystal over here so that I could easily um, measure the frequency. That was a really bad idea because every time you bump these, you change the capacitance and changes the measurement, and so the me the measurements mean zilch. Uh, really, this should not be breadboarded. However, um, I did find after just a few minutes of retesting a few in the same general region, uh, I think between 1500 and 1523, these four crystals uh, are reliably within a few hertz of each other. So I'm going to use these. Now, um, I posted on the QRP tech list, uh, which if you haven't um, checked out the QRP tech list, you should. I posted there and asked some of the same questions I asked on my last video. Uh, about you know crystal matching, I was a little bit confused as to the spread of her, of how many hertz you needed. Could it be that you need a spread of 50 hertz, or that an up to a 50 hertz spread is acceptable, or 270 hertz, or whatever? Um, turns out, if you can have four matches, you should use them. So these are pretty darn close, within a few hertz of each other. That's good enough. Uh, one of the commenters on that thread mentioned that, and uh, forgive me for not remembering your name, I think it was Paul something, um, mentioned that you should test these for the Q to see what the Q is like and use ones with a high Q. Um, I'm not going to do that. And the reason is because I'm trying to keep this simple. When Farhan uh, measured these, I'm pretty sure they just tested for frequency, not for uh, any other qualities, uh, including the Q factor. So I'm not going to do that. So we're done with this. We're done with this, this side of here. And now we're on to actually installing the um, uh, these crystals in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove these crystals. And you're probably wondering why I've got these uh, standoffs in here. And these standoffs are just part of a kit I bought on Amazon a few years ago. Um, in fact, you can see I'm running low on them because I, I've used them, I lose them, whatever. No big deal. Uh, what I need to do is uh, get rid of these four crystals so you can see um, they're paired they're here 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 and I could destructively get rid of them I could try cutting them and all that stuff that's gonna be pretty hard so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what I usually do is I I'm gonna load this up with solder and then give it a good whack and that's what the standoffs there for so that I'm not actually hitting the board itself but Hopefully, uh, once I get some molten solder on here and give it a good whack, uh, you know, get the solder nice and hot, um, then uh, Sir Isaac Newton will do his job and the crystal will land on the bench. So let's give it a shot here. I don't have my hopes up for the first try because I have not yet added any solder. This is just the solder that's on there, but we'll see if it is sufficient. Let's get this nice and hot. And of course, not board damaging hot, but not also not uh, so so cold that it um, uh, immediately solidifies. So get it, and it just fell out. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Okay, and the holes are not clear, so we'll have to work on that. But let's just go ahead and get the other ones. It literally just fell out. That's pretty cool. Uh, Let's give this a whack. Nope. Kind of not really dislodged. But yeah, it didn't really dislodge at all, actually. All right, so rather than have you watch me fight this, I'm just going to work on this. Although, I, you know what? Let's fight this together. Two of us on the case will be unstoppable. All right. Get that nice and molten and not happening. <laughs> this usually works. Ah, there, that one fell out. 
Of course, the challenge is going to be making those, getting those holes clear. Um, that's always a challenge. Uh, somebody mentioned that toothpicks work really well. If I had some, I'd use them. So let's do this. Go ahead and do the same for the other one. It's just easier when there's more. The more the more solder, the better. It just comes out a lot easier. There we go. There we go. Simple as that. Now I got to get these holes clear, and this is where having more solder makes it more funner. And is that one empty? Not quite. Um, the more you put in there, the easier it comes out. Actually. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to go fight to get these empty, and then we'll come back and get the new ones in, and we'll be done. All right, so these are going so smoothly that I thought I would show you the technique I'm using. It's pretty harsh, but um, I've really never had problems because of it, at least not yet, so I'm going to keep doing it. But I am just heating it, and then I'm just hitting it a little harder. There's a nice splat of solder there, and I can see light through it. So we're good, and... Yep, that one's good. And it's good. <laughs> that technique works way too well. Um, and yeah, it's a little harsh. I wouldn't, you know, use it on everything, but I kind of do <laughs> anyway. Um, I mean, I guess I could probably break a wire on these uh, uh, transformers here. So I'll just give them an inspection, make sure that nothing is broken. But... Uh, it should be fine. There's nothing really, really all that uh, sensitive on here. I'm not hitting any of the SMD components or anything. So now we just got to get the other filters in, or the other crystals in to create, make our new filter. And to do that, I've got these four in a bag here. The only way to fly when organizing small parts. And I'm just going to try to make them pretty and put them all the same direction. And so this one says 110592. And although I can see through that one, it is a little bit on the, on the closed side. So I'm going to try this one more time here. And now there's another one that's a little close, so let's see which one is that. So that would be, they all look fairly open. Let's try it from the back side just to, oops. just so I can identify it without my mind flipping it, doing a backflip when I flip it over. Ah, uh, this one is not, uh, the other side of it's a little iffy. There we go. Okay, so that one it was just a little, little bit iffy. We'll try to get it right here. There we go. All right, we got that one in, and we'll try to put the other ones roughly the same direction so that the numbers are roughly the same, at least facing the same direction, just to make it pretty. I'll notice it later if I don't. That one doesn't want to go in. It's always some sort of fight. There we go. Just need a little extra warming to push through the little bit that was there.
<laughs> Got that one. It also had just a little bit. So a quick warm up pushes it right on through. And last one. And that one went straight in. So we'll just give those a quick splay those out to hold them in place. And then it's time to solder. So I'll pull some new, well, we'll just use the rest of this up, I guess, suppose. And then I wasn't not sure if these are seated super well, so I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on them from the backside and then just warm up the joints real quick. And then they seat real nice. There. And yeah, yeah. now they're flush with the board. And the last thing to do, flush cutters. And you've seen these Hacko cutters in lots of videos, and um, I use them. I've had them for like, I don't know, three years, I think. And last year I busted one of the blades. And so I went to my angle, or my uh, bench grinder, and I just ground down the blades to match and kept using them. One person said, well, that's a lot of work to, wait, to, to uh, save five bucks. Not really. I mean, they're perfectly useful. I, I To me, it was more work to go over to Amazon and order another set. <laughs> uh, all right, well, that's it. Uh, the sideband filter is now wobblier than it was. Or at least it's not as straight as looking as it was, but honestly, who cares? And uh, I do just a little bit, frankly, but oh well. I'll have to live with it. Um, it's now moved to 11052. So the next step is going to be putting a um, well, one of these uh, four to one transformer um, here or somewhere right in here because uh, this bidirectional amplifier well these amplifiers are 170 ohm amplifiers and I need them to I need them to present themselves as 50 ohm amplifiers 170 divided by four is like 42 and a half so there, there I go trying to go do math again. <laughs> um, so I need this to present itself as 42 and a half ohms or 50 ohms, closest we can get to the bandpass filter. So that's where that comes in. So I'm probably going to end up mounting that here, and that's going to be the next video. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed me watching me uh, hack away on this uh, old bit X40. Um, and, and you know, there are some who might wonder why I'm I'm doing this. And in a blog post I did back in October. Um, I explained that this radio has sentimental value to me, um, not because it's my first HF radio, although it is, and that is definitely part of it, um, but it's because my wife bought me this radio as a gift, and that means a lot to me. And so um, I want to honor her by, uh, in my own way, by making this radio work again. So um, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, 73.